Yeah, so Alternative London is sort of social enterprise which employs young creative people to be tour guides in the East End of London. Uh, we want to show people a kind of up-to-date view of the city, but also talk about you know everything that's happened to bring us to where we are today. Talk about some of the threats that the area is facing and things that people are doing to sort of try and counteract those threats. The main focus really is a is a street art and. Um, yeah, we also do like street art workshops and we do um, bike tours and stuff. The whole project is really set up to kind of try and make people aware of changes that the area is going through. Everything over the last sort of three or four hundred years historically that's brought it to this point, it was an ex-industrial area, so there's a lot of um, abandoned old buildings that artists started moving into um, they weren't exactly beautiful so artists wanted to put their own stamp on them no one cared about them back then um, also there was a lot of bomb sites from World War II in East London uh, so that contributed to it it's generally um, people sort of taking ownership of, a, of an area that was previously completely unloved and just giving it a little bit of love and a yeah. bit of attention and that was mainly it it was generally people doing it for themselves more than anything else. There's generally like the traditional graffiti style stuff, um, the letter based art form, the tagging, then there's a lot of um, the more sort of image based stuff, stencil work, um, people using different materials. Um, so that yeah there's a huge array of materials, a huge array of different kinds of artwork. But what we're seeing now as well as um, a lot more different approaches towards the street art. There are still people out there that are trying to use it as a platform to voice their messages, their opinions, um, political statements. With, with the mainstream um, factor moving into it, it's actually really interesting because there are sort of certain organisations now that are running these sort of organised walls projects where it's completely taken out the organic element of it so there's a sort of rebellion that you're seeing from some more traditional street artists they're going in and getting in the way of that and mm. making it organic again and they're going and painting over stuff when they're not necessarily allowed to be they are sort of questioning this new form of street art so really it's sort of breaking into two different ways now the ones that want to have quick fame by painting on a organised wall or doing a piece to promote their gallery show and then the people that are sort of doing it for what I consider kind of the right reasons just purely yeah. because they want to be out there doing it. Some of it is vandalism but so is knocking down perfectly good buildings and building huge ugly tower blocks as well that's also vandalism. Vandalism can come in many different forms, putting up a huge advertising banner that looks really, really ugly that you can't look away from, that's vandalism. That's intruding on my space, that's not giving me a choice to look at anything otherwise and why should it only be that town planners and advertisers get to decide how our cities look and if people have to go out and paint the walls in their community to take back that space and even the playing field then that's what people have to do and if that's vandalism then maybe you know that form of vandalism is a good thing because it makes whether people like it or not it's, it's getting a reaction from them whereas very rarely does a billboard or anything else like that or big tower blocks get a reaction from anyone. <laughs>